Hello everyone, welcome to our PMP exam questions and answer solving session for November. So just like the previous months, in today's session, we'll be solving some medium to high difficulty level PMP exam questions very similar to your actual exam. Also, if you have not watched the previous Q&A sessions, I would highly encourage you to check them out, okay? I am sure that you will find them immensely helpful for your PMP exam. I will link the entire playlist in the description section of this video. Now, if you are preparing for the PMP exam, you can use today's class to assess how well you are prepared for the exam, okay? So out of the five questions that we'll be solving today, the target would be to get all the five out of five questions correct, okay? However, the minimum expectation is that you should get at least four out of the five questions correct to consider yourself fairly well prepared for the PMP exam. Now, anything less than that, you might need a bit more preparation, okay? So give this video a like, get a pen and a paper, and let's get started with question number one. Right, so question number one, guys, pause the video, read the question, and try to answer it before we solve it together, okay? So the drill will remain the same as the previous month's Q&A sessions, okay? Right, so let's get started. During a project status review meeting, the quality manager requests for a new upgrade to the product packaging, okay? So note that it's a new request for an upgrade, okay? To which document should the project manager refer to to find out who has the authority to approve this change request, okay? So the quality manager has put forward a new upgrade request to the product packaging and now the project manager needs to find out that who has the authority to approve this change request, okay? So let's look at the options A, B, C and D and evaluate them one by one, okay? And while doing that, we'll keep the positive bias principle as we have learned in this video in our mind, okay? And that means that we'll not reject any option without solid reasoning, okay? So we'll always have a positive bias of keeping all the options on the table till we have a solid reason to reject that option, okay? So let's evaluate the options one by one. Option A, requirements traceability matrix, okay? Now this is incorrect, guys, right? Because requirement traceability matrix is generally used in the scope definition process, right? So when you are defining the scope of a project, you collect the requirements from the various sources and that matrix of requirement traceability gives you the relationship between a scope item versus the source from where the source has been requested for, okay? So in that sense, this has nothing to do with providing any authority for any change request approvals, okay? So option A is incorrect. Option B, RACI matrix, okay? So if you know about RACI matrix, so it's a matrix which talks about how tasks will be allocated in a project, okay? So R is the responsible person, A is the approver, C is the person who you need to consult with, and I is the person whom you need to keep informed, okay? So please go ahead and study RACI matrix from your PMBOK 7th edition or the process group practice guide, okay? So it's very important for your PMP exam. Now you might say that as per the scenario of this question, the RACI matrix can be a potential option because in this matrix, you'll be able to find the person who is responsible for approving the change request, who needs to be consulted while approving the change request, who needs to be kept informed while approving the change request. So this might be a potential option, okay? So let's hold this for a while. Option C, change management plan, okay? So very important. So this change management plan is developed during the planning process of a project, okay? And this change management plan talks about how changes will be managed across the entire life cycle of the project. Who will approve the change? how the changes will be documented, how the changes will be evaluated, etc, etc, okay? So the entire plan of managing a change is captured in the change management plan. So this is also a potential option to find out who has the final authority to approve the change request, okay? So let's hold this option for now as well, okay? Note that how we are not rejecting any option without any solid grounds, okay? So as of now, we don't have a solid ground yet to reject an option between option B and option C, okay? Let's look at option D, change log, that is incorrect, right? Because in change log, you basically keep a track of a change request from the time it has been proposed till the time it has reached a decision, whether it's accepted, whether it's rejected, whether it's put on hold, etc., etc., right? 
So the change log is basically a ready reconner where you can go to to access information in terms of the status of a change request. Okay, but here it is definitely not giving you the information in terms of who will have the authority to approve a change request. So option D is of course incorrect. So I hope none of you have selected between option A and option D. Okay, now let's closely evaluate option B. Okay, now if you see RACI matrix guys, what is this? This is a tool, right? This is a tool for task allocation. So for example, whenever there is a task which comes out of a project meeting or a project status review meeting, etc, etc. What you do is you use RACI matrix to allocate a task. Okay. And while allocating that you document that who will be the person who will be responsible for it, who is the person who will be approving it, who is the person who will be contributing to it and who is the person who needs to be kept informed. Okay. So note that RACI matrix is a tool which is used for task allocation. It is not used as a tool to decide escalation matrices or to decide approval chains. Okay. So when it comes to change request and when it comes to finding that who needs to approve a change request. So for example, let's say any change request less than $5,000 can be approved by the project manager himself. Any change request between $5,000 to $50,000 needs to be approved by the project sponsor. Let's say any change request more than $50,000 needs to be approved by the program office or the project office, etc, etc. Okay. So everything is captured in the change management plan. Okay. So the correct answer to this question is option C, which is the change management plan. RACI matrix is a very, very close choice, but a incorrect answer choice guys. Okay. And also note that guys, the question is asking here that to which document should the project manager refer to? Okay. So when it's talking about document, it's basically talking about a project artifact. Okay. It's not talking about a tool or a technique. Okay. So change management plan is a project artifact. DC matrix is not a project artifact or a project document. It's a tool or technique for task allocation or responsibility allocation. Okay. So from that angle as well, this answer choice is also incorrect. Now in your PMP exam, please be aware of such close answer choices. Okay. You'll be time and again tested on your understanding in terms of such close answer choices. And there you need to have a solid foundational knowledge to decide between the right answer and the very close wrong answer choice. Okay. So RACI matrix here is a very close wrong answer choice. And the correct answer to this question is option C, which is the change management plan. If you are preparing for your PMP exam, guys, I would suggest that you check out my PMP exam prep courses on Udemy. All the courses are very highly rated among students and many PMP aspirants like you have passed their PMP exam with the help of these courses. All the links will be provided in the description section of this video. And now, Let's move on to question number two, right? So question number two, the drill will remain the same guys. Please read the question and select an answer before we solve this together. You can pause the video here if you wish to, right? So let's start in an interior designing project. A feasibility study was done to identify the customer product fit. Okay. However, during the project, a change request was approved. Okay. Mind that this was approved. Okay which contradicts the original product design. So basically this contradicts the original customer product fit that was decided for this project. Okay. But mind that this change request has already been approved. The product development team has agreed to this after a thorough data analysis, which action should the project manager take? Okay. Interesting. So let's start evaluating the options one by one. Option A. Decline the change request since it does not fit the customer needs. Of course, it's incorrect guys, right? Because if the change request has already been approved after a thorough data analysis and the product development team has been involved to make that approval recommendation, then you basically don't have the authority to decline the change request, right? Because if it is approved, you have to implement it plain and simple, right? So that is why option A is incorrect. Let's look at option B implement the change. Okay. Very straight, very direct. Probably this option is the correct option. Okay. But let's hold this option for now because we still have not evaluated option C and option D and we have not rejected them on solid grounds. Right. Let's look at option C 
escalate the change request to the product owner and ask for a reassessment now this is pointless guys right because this change request is already coming from the product development team and the product owner is basically leading the product development team right now escalating the change request again to that person and asking for a reassessment just because initially the product had a customer product fit which was aligned with the product development team and now this has been revised doesn't make sense to you as a project manager okay because the roles and responsibilities you are executing as a project manager is very different from the roles and responsibilities your product owner is executing okay so you should not mix between the two and you should hold every person accountable in their role okay now if the product owner has approved a product design which does not fit the initial customer product requirements now that can be for multiple reasons that is basically not your headache as a project manager right if you have a documented approved change request that is reason enough for you to go and start executing that okay now escalations reassessment etc etc you can do for intellectualization but that is basically wastage of time and for that reason option c is incorrect let's look at option d ask for a detailed report of the data analysis followed by another feasibility study now pointless guys right this is bullshit because after you have already received a data analysis which has been coming from the product development team and with the base assumption that there are competent people in the product development team who are doing this data analysis and coming up with a revised product design asking for a detailed report of data analysis might be good for you for just to go through that detailed report and understand what led to this change but in the end it doesn't influence the way your project will be executed now if a change request is already been approved by the product development team or has gone through the proper process of change control board approvals etc etc you have to go ahead and implement the change plain vanilla simple okay so that is why option b is the correct answer choice for this question now see that sometimes in your pmp exam you will find such very short very crisp answer choices okay now all the right answer choices in your pmp exam doesn't need to be verbose or doesn't need to have a lot of data or detailing etc etc within that answer option right so do not fall for this kind of an opinionated view that whenever you see a short answer choice which has two three words in it you reject that answer choice thinking that okay it is like too short for an answer choice and it is not giving you enough detail to evaluate that answer choice right so it is basically not that and for that reason if you see option b even if it is plain simple saying that implement the change that's it you have to go ahead and do it and that is why this is the correct option as well so option b is the correct answer answer to this question if you are liking the video guys please press the like button i know you have not done it so please press the like button it helps me to understand that you value such educational content and motivates me to prepare more such videos to help you with your pmp exam and now let's move on to question number three question number three guys the drill will remain the same. Please read the question and try to answer it before we solve this together. You can pause the video here if you wish to. Right, so let's start solving the question. After one of the project deliverables was delayed, the project manager decides that a feature upgrade is required for the product to meet the KPIs, okay, like the key performance indicators. In your PMP exam, you will find such short abbreviations often within the question stem. Now, these are very common abbreviations which are used in the project management body of knowledge. And if you have been a project manager and you are writing the PMP exam, you should know what is a project KPI. Okay. The following steps are taken by the project manager. Okay. So basically one of the project deliverables has been delayed. Now the project manager thinks that if you do a feature upgrade to meet the project KPIs, probably you'll be able to make up for the delay. Okay. So a formal change request is chartered and the same is communicated to all the stakeholders. However, a feedback is received that this communication did not meet the stakeholder expectations. Okay. What is the next best step for the project manager? right so to summarize there has been a delay in a project the project manager thinks that if a feature upgrade is done probably that delay or the kpi can be salvaged to some extent and for that there is a change request which is chartered and the change has been communicated to all the stakeholders however some of the stakeholders feel that the way in which this change has been communicated to them does not meet their expectations okay what is the next best step for you as a project manager option a review the stakeholder engagement plan and redraft the communication accordingly 
okay a potential option let's hold this for now so you might say that okay if i review the stakeholder engagement plan read off the communication accordingly that might be a good option okay now i will question that what is the content of stakeholder engagement plan okay think about it while we evaluate the other options and come back to this in a minute option b hold meetings with the stakeholders to understand what was missed okay so you can think that okay let's do all the meetings with all the stakeholders and try to understand what has been missed is it a productive use of your time as a project manager questionable okay but let's hold this for now option c roll back the feature upgrade request and resort to the base plan this is incorrect because this basically means that you don't have any credibility as a project manager because once you have decided that something needs to be done to salvage the delay or to improve the project kpi now you are rolling it back because some of your stakeholders have expressed concerns regarding the way this has been communicated to them okay so that gives an impression that you are a project manager who is not confident about the decision that is been taken in a project okay so basically you do not want to convey that kind of a picture to your stakeholders so option c is ruled out straight away option d review the communications management plan okay interesting because if you go back and watch few of my other pmp q a videos which i publish every month you will see that we discuss in some of the videos that correct way to evaluate such answer choice which basically talks about what is the next best step because it's hinting to a sequence framework that we learn in our 35 pdu course as well so in such kind of a sequence where you are presented with a problem and you have to propose a solution basically the premise is you have to review before you act okay do not take an action before you review the relevant documents you do not review anything random okay so you have to review the relevant documents very important so we solve such kind of problems extensively in our 35 pdu course right but at least you get the premise here right because when you are presented with a problem or a challenge as part of the scenario you should always review first before you take an action action is never the first step okay now when it comes to review you can review the stakeholder engagement plan or you can review the communications management plans now here comes the second part of this framework that what you need to review should be relevant to the problem that you are facing you should not review here the stakeholder stakeholder engagement plan because what is the stakeholder engagement plan it talks about the engagement levels of your various stakeholders and it also discusses that if one of your stakeholders is less engaged in your project but the design state of the stakeholder is to engage him or herself a bit more what should you do to make that stakeholder get more engaged in your project what is your plan of action so these kind of details are talked in the stakeholder engagement plan it doesn't discuss much about the way you should be communicating with your stakeholder so even if option a talks about review it is giving you a incorrect document or a incorrect artifact to review okay so that is why option a is out of the table okay now an important point to notice here is guys that how we are rejecting every option on solid grounds so we are not rejecting any option just because it doesn't look right feel right seem right hear right etc etc okay that is not how i teach my students to write the pmp exam any option you reject should be based on solid logical reasoning based on the project management body of knowledge okay period let's evaluate option b hold meetings with the stakeholders to understand what was missed i'll say i'll rule out this option guys because that is not a productive use of the project manager's time how many stakeholders you will meet and how many meetings you will keep on doing just to go back and forth in terms of what you are proposing as part of this change request right so that is definitely not a sensible option to go for as a pmp project manager so that is why option b is incorrect we definitely talked about option c that that is out of the table already so the correct answer to this question is option d which is reviewing the communications management plan so it does fall into this framework of review before act that you are basically reviewing some document before you are taking an action but even more important you are reviewing something which is relevant okay so the communication management plan will basically talk about that whenever you are communicating a change request what is the way you should communicate that change request to your stakeholders so if you have missed that probably it is expected for your stakeholders to come back and say that hey you know what the way you have communicated this to us doesn't make sense to us because this was not aligned when the project was in planning stage so you have to communicate with them within the aligned format of the communications management management plan and that detail can be found in the communications management plan it can be one pagers it can be emails it can be memos whatever it is it should be documented in the communications management plan 
So the correct answer to this question is option D, which is to review the communications management plan first and then decide on the next course of action, whether you want to do meetings, whether you want to do a team's call, whether you want to redraft your communications and send it back to the stakeholders for approval, etc, etc. Okay, so that is not the topic of this question. The question specifically talks about what is the next best step for the project manager now with this scenario and of course the next best step is that the project manager goes and reviews the communications management plan and the correct answer to this question is option D. Make sure you subscribe to my channel PMP with Ray for more such videos for your PMP exam prep okay. Your support really helps educational channels like this to grow on YouTube and now let's move on to question number four. Right, so question number four guys, please read the scenario, solve the question yourself before we solve this together. You can pause the video here if you wish to. Right, so let's start. An iOS application development team is reassessing the product design after a sharp increase in negative reviews. Okay, it was being found that some of the features of the application were used in a way not envisioned by the product design team. So the end users are using some features of the application in a way which the product design team didn't think of. And that is what is creating a gap in the expectation in the minds of the end users. And that is what is generating the negative reviews for this application. Okay, Which agile practice could have prevented this issue from occurring? Okay. Now there are four options which are provided here, smoke testing, behavior driven development, feature driven development and information radiators. Okay. Now to answer this question correctly guys, you need to understand each and every term of smoke testing, behavior driven development, feature driven development and information radiators in context of agile project management. If you know the details of these terms, you will be able to answer this question in less than 30 seconds. Okay. And if you don't know, it will be very difficult for you to answer such knowledge driven questions in your PMP exam based on agile correctly. Okay. So I would recommend that you watch a few videos on my YouTube channel where I have covered such topics in depth. Okay. So it is very important that you have a sound base of the agile terms and terminologies for your PMP exam. Right. So let's start solving this question and while doing that, let's evaluate each of these terms in context of the scenario that has been provided. Okay. Number one, what is smoke testing? In agile project management, smoke testing is a type of preliminary testing that is conducted to quickly evaluate whether the most critical functionalities of a software application are working as expected. Okay. The primary purpose of smoke testing is to determine if the software build is stable enough for more in-depth testing. Right. So smoke testing is basically a tool which is used in the testing phase of a software application. Here we are not talking about that, right? We are talking about a gap which happened at the design and development stage of the application. So that is why smoke testing is an incorrect answer choice. Let's look at the second option which is behavior driven development. What is behavior driven development? Now behavior driven development in agile is a software development methodology that encourages collaboration among developers, testers and non-technical stakeholders which effectively sometimes are the end users by using natural language to describe the desired behavior of a software system. Now when we talk of natural language, you have often heard the term called user stories in agile, right? So that is what we mean by natural language to describe the desired behavior of a software system. So if you're writing the PMP exam, you should know what user stories are in agile. Okay. Behavior driven development aims to align the development process of the business objectives and improve communication between different roles involved in the development process. Right. So that nicely falls into the scenario that has been described as part of this question. Right. So if the behavior driven development was followed very well in this entire process, of application development, keeping the end user in mind through the use of user stories, this kind of situation could have been prevented from occurring, right? So behavior driven development might be the right answer choice for this question. Okay. But anyways, let's hold this option for now and let's evaluate option C and option D. Option C, feature driven development. What is FDD? So feature driven development or FDD is an iterative and incremental software development methodology that is part of a larger agile framework. Okay. It focuses on delivering tangible working software features within relatively short time frames for a global or a large scale agile project. FDD 
places a strong emphasis on collaboration, domain modeling and feature based planning. Okay. Now with that in context, this does not typically fall in the scenario that has been described here, right? Because feature driven development might be a best practice of agile that can be used for larger agile and scrum frameworks. Okay. But here it doesn't link to the context that has been provided in the scenario. Okay. It is very important that the right answer choice links to the context that has been provided in the scenario and feature driven development doesn't fall in that context, which would give me confidence to think that if FDD was applied, this could have prevented this issue from occurring, which is the gap between the end user and the product design. So that is why feature driven development is a wrong answer choice. Okay, let's look at option D information radiators. What are information radiators? Now in agile project management an information radiator is a term used to describe a visible display of project information that is placed in a shared workspace. Okay. The purpose of information radiators is to make key project information easily accessible and understandable to everyone involved in the project, which promotes transparency and collaboration. Now note that information radiators could be physical boards as well, or could be virtual boards as well when the teams are not co-located and these displays are typically kept at a location which are easily accessible by team members over a virtual network or typically being mounted in an office area where the team members could easily see them during the project working hours. Okay. Now that is information radiators. Now this is definitely a best practice in agile, but this is something which is totally irrelevant to the scenario that has been provided. Okay. So that is why option D is also incorrect. Now having the project burn up chart or the project burn down chart or the team structure as part of the information radiator as part of this project doesn't give us confidence that this could have prevented this gap between the product design department and the end user department happening for this scenario. And that is why option D might be a good practice for agile projects, but it is totally irrelevant to the scenario that has been provided here. Okay. So the correct answer to this question is option B, which is behavior driven development. Now the importance of this question guys is to help you understand how critical it is for you to study and understand these core terms and terminologies based on agile for your PMP exam. Okay. So this will be a key building block for your success in the PMP exam, right? And that is how well you know the basic concepts as part of overall project management. No one is asking you to go deep into understanding what involves behavior driven development. What are the steps in behavior driven development? What are the key roles in behavior driven development, etc, etc. You need not to go to that level of detail, but at least to know the basics and the foundational elements of these terms so that at least you are able to differentiate between various agile best practices such as smoke testing, behavior driven development, feature driven development, information radiators, etc, etc. Okay. So I hope you will take this tip in consideration while you are preparing for your PMP exam. I hope you are finding this exercise helpful, right? Remember the target is to get all the five out of five questions correct. However, the minimum expectation is to get at least four out of the five questions correct. Okay. So here comes the fifth and the final question, right? So question number five guys, this is the scenario. These are the four options. Please read the question and try to answer it before we move forward. Okay. And you can pause the video here if you wish to Right. So let's start a financial application development project is nearing completion. Okay. And is at the handover stage. Okay. So note that the project is not completed yet. Okay. It is somewhere between monitoring and controlling to the closeout process with respect to the five steps of a project life cycle, which are initiation, planning, execution, monitoring and controlling and close out, right? One of the key stakeholders has expressed concern that the project has not met all the deliverables. Okay. How can the project manager gain approval of these stakeholders basically to complete this handover stage? Okay. So it is safe to assume that this stakeholder is a key stakeholder and that person thinks that the project has not met all the deliverables. And that is one of the reason he or she is not willing to sign off the project handover. Okay. Now what can the project manager do to gain approval of this stakeholder? So let's look at the options one by one option A perform a requirements traceability exercise after obtaining the new requirements. 
incorrect right so basically there is no new requirement that we are talking about here okay so there were kpis that has already been established for the project it had a set requirement which the project was working towards now this stakeholder for whatever reason is not aligning that those requirements have been completed okay and requirements traceability exercise is something which you do at the scope definition process okay not at the handover stage or the closeout process okay so this activity is a bit redundant and that is why option a is incorrect let's look at option b make sure that the benefits management plan is shared with the stakeholder again incorrect choice guys right because the benefits management plan basically talks about how the benefits of the project will be handled after the project is completed okay so it is very important for you to understand when the benefits management plan takes action okay basically benefits management plan even if it is prepared during the project life cycle it is put into action once the project is over okay once the project gets handed over from the project department to the operation and maintenance department that is when the benefits management plan actually starts working because that is when the project benefits are needed to be managed right so that is why you need to understand the key difference that where the benefits management plan is kicking in okay and for this reason this is an incorrect option because even if you do a benefits management plan review with the stakeholder the stakeholder might say that hey look i'm all okay with this benefits management plan and whatever you have chosen to do to establish those benefits but as of now i don't believe the project is complete for the benefits to be realized because you have not met all the deliverables of the project okay so for this main reason option b is totally irrelevant and incorrect as well let's look at option c review the project charter with the stakeholder in a one-to-one -one meeting okay you can do that that might give the stakeholder some confidence in terms of what were the kpis of the project and how the project has been able to achieve it or not achieve it etc etc let's hold this option for now option d assess the project scope document in line with the stakeholders expectations okay this is also a nice option because what you are saying here is look i will assess or review the project scope document which talks about the project kpis and basically the project deliverables right so this is what the scope document of the project talks about the deliverables of the project right and i will assess it in line with the stakeholders expectation now between c and d both are very close answer choices and in such kind of a scenario in your PMP exam, you need to identify the best answer choice. So you will experience such kind of a situation in your PMP exam multiple times that both the options are very close option and you need to select one between the two. And in that case, what you need to do is you need to select an option which is in sync with the context that has been provided in the question scenario. Now with that in mind, if you closely look at option C, what it's saying, right? It's saying that review the project charter. Okay, now the project charter talks about a lot of things other than the project deliverables, right? It talks about the project cost. It talks about the project milestone. It talks about the project team. It talks about the project funding strategy. It talks about the project life cycle, etc., etc. Now the stakeholder who has expressed concern might not be interested in anything apart from the deliverable section. Okay, so basically you are reviewing the project charter. That is fine, but that doesn't give me confidence that this will be able to resolve the concern that the stakeholder is having in terms of of the project deliverables okay so that is why i am not too comfortable selecting option c because option d gives me much more strong conviction that if i review the project scope document in line with the stakeholders expectations the probability of solving this situation which i am in is considerably higher rather than reviewing only the project charter with the stakeholder in the one-to-one -one meeting so it is very important for you to understand this guys i am not saying that option c is incorrect okay option c may be correct but option d is a better option to go for as a project manager to resolve this situation okay and that is why the correct answer to this question is option d and not option c it is very very critical for you to understand why i am rejecting option c okay number one i am rejecting option c because reviewing the project charter is a bit redundant when compared to reviewing the project scope document with the stakeholder and secondly reviewing the project charter with the stakeholder in a one-to-one -one meeting is a less preferable option to me rather than assessing the project scope document with the stakeholder in line with his or her expectation okay so option d is a very strong line of action which you can take as a project manager which has a higher probability okay very important for you to understand higher probability 
of solving this situation which has been mentioned in the question stem right how can the project manager gain approval from this stakeholder so option c and option d are very close answer choices but option c is incorrect because of the reasons that we have discussed and the correct answer to this question is option d so that's the end of the quiz guys let me know in the comments below how much you were able to score okay i'd be very interested to know that also if you have scored less please do not be demotivated okay you just need a bit more preparation please make sure that you do a thorough analysis of your mistakes so that you get to know about your gaps thank you for watching and i will see you again next month with another session of pmp exam practice questions and answers